Hey, what's up guys? It's Neonate. I'm making these videos to help you be a better Catan player and beat all your friends at home. Today, I'm going to critique the gameplay of DSi Man. He reached out to me in March. Sorry, it's taken me so long to get to this. DSi Man was introduced to Catan a few weeks before he sent me this video. He'd play Catan with his friends, but he hadn't been able to win any games. He started playing online to practice, but also wasn't winning very often. So let's take a look at his gameplay and see if there's anything he could do better. In this game, DSi Man is in the third position playing with the red pieces. Blue takes the 5-9-10. That spot is worth 11 points, next to the best ore tile. She heads towards the brick port, which will probably be better than the wheat port. Green takes the 5-6-11. That spot is worth 11 points, next to the strong wheat tile. He points his road perhaps towards the 6-11-12, or maybe the 9-12. It's Red's turn. As you know, when playing third, I advise taking the rarest resource. On this board, wheat is the rarest resource. You either get next to the six wheat now, or you'll be stuck with the eight wheat later. Red takes the five nine ten and points his road towards the coast. I disagree with this choice. I would have taken the four six eleven. You want to take the rarest resource because it gives you the most flexibility for your second pick. There are three spots available to get ore, and two of these also give you brick. So you should be able to get those resources with your second pick. When you take the 5-9-10, you've really backed yourself into a corner. You'll need wood and you'll need wheat. And the only place to get that is the 4-6-11. If gray takes a spot next to the 6 wheat, which he should, red will be forced to take the 8-10 and go without wood. Gray takes the 3-4-6 and the 3-4-8. This is a bit puzzling. Gray goes without wheat in his initial settlements. He probably intends to go to the 8 wheat. He should have at least placed the 3-4-6 second to get the free road. The good news for Red is the 4-6-11 was left open. Red takes the 4-6-11. No, wait. No, he doesn't. He takes the 8-10. I disagree. You have 8 points of brick. You need wood. Also, 10 points is better than 8. Green takes the 2-4-9, worth 8 points. He points towards the 2-6. Blue takes the 4611, worth 10 points. She points towards the 3 1 ports. Now that all the settlements have been placed, let's assess the players. Blue has 21 points, good production, the best ore and wheat, good sheep, a lot of wood, and no brick. Blue should go for largest army. Her plan should be to upgrade to cities, get to a port, and buy development cards. Green has 19 points, good wood and brick, good wheat. Some sheep, no ore. He should go for longest road. Green's plan should be get to the 2-6 for more brick, and then upgrading to cities will be difficult unless Green sneaks over to the brick port. Green may be able to connect his settlements. Gray has 20 points, good wood and brick, a lot of sheep, no wheat. He should probably go for longest road. Gray really needs to get next to the 8 wheat, then get to a port and upgrade to cities. Red has 19 points. He's got decent or wheat sheep. He has a ton of brick and no wood. He should probably go for largest army. Red's game plan should be upgrade the 5-9-10, get to the 3-1 port, upgrade the 8-10, and buy development cards. Blue rolls a 9. Green rolls a 10. Green, right away, makes a move for the brick port. I'm sure that got Blue's attention. Red rolls a 10. He's looking for wood, offering sheep. Gray accepts. Red builds to the wheat port. I strongly disagree. Red is going to get a ton of bricks in this game, so the 3-1 port will be much more useful. Red buys a development card. I disagree. I would save for a city here. Although everyone has two points, red is behind in production. Ores also seem really hard to come by, and red was only two cards away from a city. Gray rolls a 7. He puts the robber on the 5 wood and steals from blue. Blue rolls a 5. He buys a development card. 
Green rolls an 8. Red rolls a 10. Looking for wood, offering sheep. Blue being a little bit of a pig. Red offering two cards for a wood. Red passes. I agree. There's no need to panic here. Gray rolls a six. He builds a road to the 3 1 port. Blue rolls a ten. He plays a year of plenty for bricks. He builds a road and cuts off green. If green had been a little bit more stealthy, blue probably would have focused on the 3-1 port. But because green showed his intentions, blue prioritized cutting him off. Green rolls a 4. Now he heads towards the 2-6. Red rolls a 3. He's looking for wood, offering two sheep. He's looking for wheat, offering sheep and ore. I don't like that idea. I would have tried trading away a brick for a wheat or a sheep for a four for one to build a city. Red buys a development card. I'm okay with that. I wouldn't pass with eight cards in this situation. Gray rolls a five. He wants brick, offering wood. Red accepts. I agree, since he can't make a wood. Gray, looking for wheat. He trades sheep in for wheat. Blue rolls a six. She builds a settlement at the 9-12 for three points. Green rolls a four. Red rolls a ten. Looking for wheat, offering sheep and ore. Offering four cards for wheat? What? Offering three ores? Red times out. I probably would have built a road to get under seven cards. Yes, it wouldn't feel good, but red's priority here should be getting a city on the five, nine, ten, then getting a port. Gray rolls a six. He wants sheep offering wood. Red accepts. I disagree. I probably shouldn't take a one for one trade on your opponent's turn when they have more than seven cards and you have more than seven cards. Gray builds a settlement on the three, one port for three points. Blue rolls a 10. Green rolls a 9. 
builds a settlement on the 2-6 for 3 points. Red rolls a 3. He trades 4 ores for a wheat. Ouch. He builds a settlement on the wheat port for 3 points and builds a road to the 3-1 port. I think Red underestimates how valuable those ores are. He needs to be patient and wait for his 8s to come in. I also would have asked for a trade first, since 6s did roll. He also could have built at the 3-1 port, which would have been better. Gray rolls an 8. He builds 2 roads to get to the 8 wheat. Blue rolls an 8. Now the 8s come in. He's looking for ore. Offering wheat and sheep. He trades with gray. He upgrades the 4611 for 4 points. Green rolls an 8. Red rolls a 3. Now red's wishing he hadn't traded those 4 ores. He trades in 2 wheats for an ore. He buys a development card. I strongly disagree. Red really needs a city. Red gets a second VP, so he's at 5 points, though it looks like 3. Gray rolls a 10. He wants a brick. He trades sheep in for brick and built a settlement on the 3-8 for 4 points. Blue rolls a 7. He puts it on the 6 brick. And he steals from green. Green rolls a 6. Red rolls an 8. He buys another development card. I disagree again. He needs a save for a city. Red gets another knight, so he has two knights hidden. Gray rolls a five. He buys a development card. Blue rolls a ten. He trades sheep in for brick. He builds a road to the 3-1 port. Green rolls a five. Red rolls a 7. He blocks a 6 wheat, steals from blue. He's looking for wood, offering two cards. He trades with gray. He builds at the 3-1 port for six points, looks like four. I disagree. Again, red needs a city. He should be asking for ores and wheat, or trade in his sheep for ore. Gray rolls a 5. Gray plays a knight and puts it on the 9 ore and steals from blue. He buys a development card. Blue rolls a 6. Green rolls a 6. He builds a road towards the 3 9 11. He builds another road. He trades wheat in for brick. He builds another road to prevent red from getting any ideas. He takes longest road for 5 points. Red rolls a 7. Blue loses some cards. Red blocks the six brick. He steals from gray since green has no cards.
He trades brick in for wheat. He buys a development card. I still disagree. Red gets a third knight. Gray plays a knight before the roll. Gray now has two knights showing. He places it on the six wheat and steals from blue. Red really needs to consider playing knights to catch up. Gray rolls an eight. Blue rolls an eight. Green rolls a 12. Red rolls a 3. I would have played a knight here to try to catch up with gray. Gray rolls a 10. He wants ore, offering wheat. He buys a development card. He buys another development card. Gray is really poised to take largest army now. Blue rolls a six. Green rolls a seven. He moves the robber to the eight wheat and steals from red. Red plays a knight before the roll. He places it on the six wheat and steals from blue. Gray is probably winning. I would put it on the four wood to encourage gray to show a third knight. Red rolls a 10. He trades sheep in for ore. He upgrades the five, nine, 10. Hooray. Red has seven points. If he can take largest army, he'll have nine. Gray rolls a five. He's looking for sheep. He trades two bricks for a sheep to blue. He plays road building and builds a settlement on the eight wood port. Gray now has five roads and can potentially take both largest army and longest road. Blue rolls a 10. Blue builds a settlement on the three one port for five points. and he builds another road. Green rolls a six. He's looking for wheat, offering brick. Red rolls a three. He wants wheat, offering sheep. He trades brick in for wheat. He trades sheep in for ore and passes. This is the first time I've seen red save for a city rather than buying a development card. Ironically, it's at the wrong time. I would have played a knight here to get to two knights, and I would have bought a development card to race for largest army. Gray rolls an eight. Gray plays a knight after the roll and takes largest army for seven points. He places the robber on the five brick and steals from red. He wants ore, offering wheat. Offering wheat and sheep. Gray buys a development card. Gray's taken such a big lead in the army race, it'll take red at least three rounds, if not more, to catch up. And at this point in the game, that's way too long. Blue rolls a five. Green rolls a 10. He wants wheat, offering a road. Trades with gray, wow. Seems a little short-sighted to give Gray the road he needs to take longest road. Green builds a settlement at the 3911 for six points. Red rolls a seven. He has nine cards and has to discard four. I would have played a knight before the roll. That would free up your five brick. Red also needs to race for largest army. Red drops sheep and ore, keeping enough to build a city.
He blocks the three ore and steals from Gray. Red upgrades the 810 for 8 points. It's worth noting that if Red had taken largest army before Gray, he would have won at this point. Gray plays his knight before the roll. He maintains his huge lead on Red in the army race. He places the robber on the 5 brick and steals from Red. Gray rolls a 10. He builds a road to take longest road for 9 points. And he builds another road for cushion. Blue rolls a 12. Green rolls a 4. Red plays a knight before the roll. That takes him to two knights. He would need three more to catch up, which will take forever. He blocks a three ore and he steals from gray. Red rolls an 8. He buys two development cards. They're both knights, but unfortunately, I think this is going to be too late. Gray rolls an eight. He builds a city for the win. Let's take a look at the stats. Wow, looks like a crazy number of 10s came in. I believe Red was doubled up on 10s, and I think this was the main reason that Red wasn't blown out in this game. Overall, I think DSI Man made a number of mistakes. In the initial placements, he missed taking the 4611, and his two settlements didn't complement each other very well. In the mid-game, his plan should have been build a city, get to a port, and buy development cards. Instead, he did it backwards. He bought development cards, he got to the port, also the wrong one, and then he built his city. And lastly, he was too slow to play his knights and he really couldn't catch up in time to take largest army. Look, it's easy to armchair quarterback with the luxury of time. It's much harder to make the best decisions in game with time pressure. I've been playing for over 15 years and I still make mistakes. The good news is by reviewing our decisions, we can learn from our mistakes and hopefully make better decisions and win more games. DSI man, thank you for letting me look at your game. I hope this was helpful and good luck.